How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we're going to be doing some more OSINT. This video we're going to be covering a couple uh, I guess techniques that you can use when doing video analysis and trying to geolocate the vantage point of a particular subject. Uh, we're going to be covering uh, stitching video keyframes together to make an image so you could do some analysis on that image and not on the video. It's a lot easier, I'll show you. And then calculating the distance from a vantage point from an event uh, using the speed of sound. A uh, huge shout out to uh, Sans487 and Dutch OSINT guy for talking about this during their free webinar they had like last month. Uh, but basically we're going to be doing uh, analysis on this video right here. So we'll go ahead and play it real quick. So the fighting, the fighting, the fighting, the fighting now. There's a lot okay. to take in right here. Stab him, he's got a knife, he's got a knife, he's got a knife, he's got a knife. He's dropped the knife on the floor, he's dropped the knife you on know, the floor. It's obviously an attack he's going of back some sort. The knife we're not going to be getting into the specifics of this attack. However, what we're going to do is try to kind of break down what's happening in this video as far as the location of it. The, fight, uh, the, the best way to do that is instead of just looking at the video and keep watching it over and over and over again, we're going to use this tool called Invid. Uh, it's a browser add-on in Firefox. It might be an add-on in Chrome as well. I can't verify that, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the URL of this video and we're going to go to Invid's uh, browser add-on, go to keyframes, and we're going to throw the URL in here. And I believe you could do this with um, YouTube and other sorts of videos. And right here, it's going to break down this video into keyframes. And if you hit show detailed view, you can actually download uh, these keyframes. Now, <clears throat> it, it, it does kind of lag in the fact that you do have to right click and save all of these. But, you know, go ahead and do that. You know, you right click, save image as, blah, 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 save it. So now what we do with this is there's another tool called Image Stitch. It's just an executable. Uh, I don't know if they actually have a, you know, a .db or anything like that or DMG for Mac, but we're going to get, go, get, holy shit, English. We're going to hit Open Images <clears throat> and we're going to select all of these images. It's going to process it and we get something like this. Now it's significantly easier now to break down this video because we have it all kind of stitched together. So cool little tool. So now that we got that covered, um, I also wanna bring up another thing that I learned during the, um, the OSINT free webinar they did is there's actually this Twitter page that I'm going to be doing a lot more of. It's called Quiz Time. And basically it's, uh, you know, quiz, this page right here, quiz time. And basically the quiz is to geolocate the photo. That's literally all it is. I don't know if you win anything or anything like that, but you know, people try to guess where this is at. We, <clears throat> we guessed it during the class. I got it pretty quickly, not to brag or anything like that, but uh, some different techniques you can use here. So if you are looking for a challenge, definitely check out at quiz time on Twitter. So now that we got the image stitching portion of this video covered. Let's get into some really good dirty math. So I'm sure we're all aware of what happened in Beirut this week with the explosion. Um, and Bellingcat actually covered all of this already. So I'm not going to try to geolocate anything new here. I'm actually not going to attempt to geolocate anything. I just want to show a technique that you can use, especially in an event like this where you could see an event and you can actually time it. Basically, there is one or a couple constants that we know in the world and the speed of sound and the speed of light. Now, we're not going to be calculating the speed of light. It, you know, it goes around the world and you know, three times a second or whatever the speed of the speed of light is. But the speed of sound is obviously significantly slower, but not really slow. Uh, but there are a few variables to the speed of sound. And luckily for us, there is a calculator online right here. And basically what we did, um, well, well, before we get into it, let's look at the video that I'm talking about. So this video right here, I'm just curious where and how far away this video was taken from the event, the explosion. I could probably do some very basic analysis to see like the harbors right here. There's like a parking lot and they're probably in a building across the street bridge thing. But I just want to test out some math skills. Uh, so we'll go ahead and watch this. So 
So we got that, we see the explosion, and then there was a delay from the explosion to the time of the, I guess, shock wave hitting the vantage point, the camera person. So what we can do here is utilize a couple open source techniques. So if we go back to this calculator, well, this is how you calculate speed in a video, frame rates, number of frames, you know, and all that. Uh, but if we go back here, we have a speed of sound calculator and it's gonna have temperature and you type in the temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius and it'll give you the speed of sound. Um, it doesn't take into account altitude and humidity, but I think this will be fine for what we're using it for. So what I did was the one variable in here is the temperature. So I just went on timeanddate.com and looked up the the weather in Beirut for the past seven days. So during the time of the explosion, which was on August 4th um, at 6 p.m., it was 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what I used here. I punched in 86 and the speed of sound is 1144 mile, or sorry, feet per second. Um, so that is what we're going to be using to calculate the speed of sound. So what I did was I took this video, I downloaded it on savevideo.me. I know it's not encrypted, but I saved the video and I threw it into a text or not text editor, video editor like Sony Vegas. And basically I broke it down from the time of the explosion. So that's where the, the first frame hits where the explosion starts. And that goes all the way to when the shockwave hits the vantage point. And as you can see right here, there are 83 frames. So we have 83 frames and the frame rate is 29.97. So I calculated that out. <clears throat> so we go right here. So number of frames, we have 85 or 84. Let's go back here. We have 83 frames divide that by the frame rate 29.97 <clears throat> so we'll do this again so number of frames 83 divided by <clears throat> 29.97 so divided by 29.97 so that's how long this video is that is the delay from the explosion itself to the time it actually reaches the camera person so 2.76 seconds uh, you know if you want to round it out 2.77 but keep in mind if you do any sort of rounding up the speed of light is pretty f***ing fast so that could be a hundred plus feet distance so we're gonna go ahead and just leave this as is so that is the time delay itself so now we got that now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply this by the <clears throat> speed of sound uh, given that variable of temperature, go ahead, multiply that out. So the vantage point from the explosion is 3,170.45 blah, 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 blah feet away. So what we could do is now take this. We're going to find the explosion site. So it was in this building right here. I believe it was the ship. You're going to have plus or minus a couple feet here, but it was this building right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the calculator. And we're just going to draw a line that is 3,170 feet. And it looks like it was in this direction. Something like this. And, and again, depending on a few variables, the video might not actually be 29.97 you know, frames per second. There, there's a few variables in here that we can't calculate, but it'll give us a ballpark estimate. So it's going to be like in this area right here. And I haven't checked or anything like that. I mean, we're pretty close. So this looks like the parking lot itself that I was talking about. Um, let me go ahead and exit out of this. Uh, yeah, so this was the parking lot. This was the building. So you, you get the point. So um, I think what you can use this for in a video is I think uh, Bellingcat has used this to determine the location of downed planes because you can see when the explosion happens of a downed plane and the speed of sound. Um, so th there's a few things you can use this for. So I'm, gonna, I'm thinking out loud here. So 
there's a few things that we do know exist. ADBS ex exists uh, for airplanes. That is what that that's their transponder. So we know the location of a plane. We know the altitude of a plane. Um, so now there's a few things that we could calculate. So uh, we know the altitude as well. Um, so the altitude. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is Pythagorean theorem sort of thing. You can use this for Pythagorean theorem for the distance. Um, so if you know the distance and you know the altitude, you can calculate um, distance, altitude. You might be able to calculate where exactly down. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm sorry. But uh, you get the point. So we were able to somewhat calculate a ballpark of where this video was taken. It was in this building right here, probably on the roof. Uh, we were, you know, a couple hundred feet off, but that's going to be a variable that you're probably just going to have to accept because, well, the speed of light moves pretty fast <coughs> quick. So anyways, that is it for this video. If you guys enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell notification so you can get notifications anytime that I post a video or should post in the post section. Um, I'm only a couple hundred hours away before I can start monetizing the shit out of my videos, so <laughs> I'm going to be doing that because I have not made a single dollar on this. I'm actually net negative 150 bucks because I did a giveaway, so you bet your ass I'm going to start monetizing my video. So anyways, that's it for this video. Y'all take care. Goodbye. And there's a quiz that says, what's your hacker handle? And we're like, all right, that sounds pretty cool. I want to know my hacker handle. So I go in, it says, what's your middle name? I enter it. What's the name of your first pet? I enter it. And it's like, congratulations, Nicole Gizmo. You are now a hacker.